it's a constant um, balancing act of not being disheartened and knowing that I just got to keep talking to people, keep telling people, keep pivoting, keep adjusting the language. It's just an everyday learning. <laughs> Starting up a Australian company in New York. Push month when I overgrind, but I feel good, so I overshine. Knock doors, get a hundred no's when I get one, I'ma get mine. Shoes tie when I start stride, hit the full wipe, then I'm inside. Inhale life on the bright side, more than nine to five, but I don't mind. Invested way too much until this game is time to pay me. Sales game, strong, slow ball, a fast bitch like I'm Haley. Been all around this town, it's not a neighborhood. The, that the reason that I'm stealing some of your time <laughs> is because, um, as you may or may not know, I started, came over here about six months ago to bring um, an element of one of my Australian businesses to New York. Mm -hmm. And basically because I wanted to be in New York. And I was gonna take the whole year and then six months, within six months I'd taken an office, employed someone and went, I'm just gonna do it. Six months on, it's, um, you know, completely, it's, it's so much more different to mm. Australia than I probably expected. And also, like, I noticed things... Tell me what your business really is. So, I don't totally know. Yeah, sure. So the business um, was created to work with small to medium businesses, so predominantly businesses under 50 staff, in everything relating to their people. So onboarding staff, how you get them to form, how that you get to, how you measure them, how you make them happy, um, all, all of those things, and right through to the how, from starting to exiting. In Australia, we don't have, so here, we, so I call it HR consulting, but here, HR consulting is payroll and benefits, mm -hmm. and we don't do anything to do with benefits or payroll. We don't have benefits in Australia. Yeah. So everything we do is all around working with the business owner on how do we actually make this team mm. succeed, like we, if do we get rid of the problem children or we deal with them, mm. how do we make them actually understand that this is what you need to do and how do we get them to do that and how do we create culture, engagement, share the story from the owner. So it's working specifically with the entrepreneur or the founder mm -hmm. on making their business grow through their people. Okay. So one of the things that I learnt very early on was that I could no longer refer to it as HR. No. So I spent two weeks telling everyone what I wasn't. I'm not a recruiter, I don't do benefits, I don't do payroll. And I was like, okay, I think I can't use HR anymore. So I had to change all my yeah, yeah. website and take yeah, HR sorry. out of it. Okay, so today uh, is one of those days, busy all around the city. Uh, big focus on uh, talking with people about um, what I'm doing, getting feedback and um, getting just their thoughts from New Yorkers because as I continue on this journey, I realise how different it is in Australia to what it is here in New York, much more than I expected in so many different capacities. Uh, and one of the areas is you know, telling people about my business and what I do. And it can be quite disheartening because um, I have people say, oh, we don't, we don't need that here or we don't use, we're not going to use those services. And that, that can be sort of like, oh, oh my gosh, like maybe I can't, maybe no one's going to buy from me. But what I'm realising is everything is just feedback from somebody's perspective of their world and what they've experienced. And all of that information is really relevant and really important to take on board, but to take it on board with the understanding that it is someone's perspective. So I'm, I'm really focusing on not getting knocked by feedback that I'm getting and more taking that information and saying, okay, so what, how can I use that? Is this person my target market? If they are and they're saying that, then how would I next time present my services in a different way? And that's one of the key things I've learned here is the language that we use in Australia, the way we describe things, certainly the way I describe my HR consulting business does not align here and it needs to be spoken about and presented differently. So. I'm just going through a process of gathering all this information, being so grateful for everything, the time people are giving me, but also making sure that not to get knocked when it's not what I want to hear. And also the opposite, like if someone says it's awesome, not to let that sort of make me think that things are easier than they are. So it's a constant um, balancing act of not being disheartened and knowing that I just got to keep talking to people, keep telling people, keep pivoting, keep adjusting the language. It's just an everyday learning <laughs> starting up an Australian company in New York. So much. But I would pick the, the top 400 companies that you want to work with that are in New York 
of whatever range. Like, I, you know, I don't know about what you want to specialize in or whatever it is. You want to be niche if you want to be broad. Um, and then I would literally make that list and be like, all right, Helen, this week, the only thing we're doing is we're going to give free advice and free content and just we want all these 400 people to know our names. And I would just make that our mission. Like, you have so much content that no one has seen yet. Right? Yeah, no. uh, you're putting it out there, but but 99.999% of the world has seen it. So I'd be like, great, let's get them to all see episode one. <laughs> and then two. And, then, and you're not asking for anything. You're just putting it in front of them and being like, and I would be really thoughtful. Like, I'd go to their Instagram pages. I'd read about what they're doing. And I'd be like, I'd DM them. I'd be like, hey, just saw your page. Because everyone DMs people with a, with a hook. They want to sell you something right away. If you actually DM somebody and was like, hey, I, I saw your thing. I see that you do this with your team. I think that's amazing. It's so aligned with what, what I believe in. Um, you know, I have this blog. And uh, in minute three and a half, uh, I actually talk about the same thing you mentioned. And it just struck me, and I don't, I don't mean to bother you, but, like, it's just something called to me to send this to you. I hope you find the valuable. Hope you have a good day. If I got a message like that, I'd be like, who is this person? I'd be so blown away with the honesty and the authenticity of that because it is. It's, it's who you are. So one of the things yep. that I've really recognised is that um, I really underestimate the the little things that how much I know the little things that people don't understand yep. don't know absolutely absolutely like you put out a piece of content about interviewing and I used it the next day for my, for my interviews hey babe just in relation to um, your question about your resume I don't think it is solicitation because you're actually not promoting a business you you're actually saying um, that you're looking for a job. So solicitation for, for that organisation is more yeah, around um, like, yeah, promoting your business. So I think it's totally fine to go out there. I think you definitely should. Um, and yeah, I don't think it will get you in any trouble. But you can always just go through Beth, the administrator, um, the chapter manager. How, uh, she's, she's really good, so she will let you know. Okay, running to another yeah. meeting. Hope you're having a good day. Bye. Me and my team going in. You should probably tell a friend. Wake up and do it again. I can't figure out. I can create the content. I can do this. How do you? How do you think? Or what? You're gonna? How do you build a following? Yeah. Like you know, what would be your recommendations to me? Yeah. I, I actually totally bought into. I think building a personal brand. Maybe there's a little bit. I, I get. I think I get a lot of energy from it. Yeah. I love sharing knowledge. Yeah. Just for that. Yeah. But also like it transposes whatever you do. So have you thought about like? Yes. Okay. I've thought about this a lot for people specifically like what you're talking about yeah. because, so, uh, and I think this is very interesting actually. So I believe that there's really boring industries that are really interesting, and if we could personal, like if people that are in any sort of industry put a spotlight on their every day, they would become the leaders in the industry. I do believe it's a, it's a business strategy for, that CEOs and entrepreneurs should yeah. be considering, seriously considering. Um, and I think that it's the way to step out from everyone else, but it is, I think, it just takes consistency and time. Like this is, for me, if I look at the vlogging, this is like a three year strategy just to even see if it worked, just to see if it's gonna get some traction. And I don't think pe people don't have the patience and everyone wants everything now, which is another reason why I think it's going to be so, su like it's gonna be yeah. successful. But all of, I mean, we just had a meeting then talking about how, you know, getting the content out, but ultimately the, the, pro the focus is just the amount of content. Just do shit loads of content. On your personal feed? Yeah, so on um, YouTube, Insta, LinkedIn. I'm not, I need to do more on Facebook. Right. I used to do a lot, but I'm. So with you. Jimmy, it's Sel and Helen. Hey, 
everyone. Uh, so yeah, so thanks for uh, you know scheduling the call, and uh, I just wanted to chat with you about our upcoming event. Great. And kind of get a background about you and, and, and see if it's a good fit. Uh, yeah, awesome. That that's great. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. The troubles, the troubles of not the troubles, but what what obstacles do entrepreneurs from abroad when they come here? Uh, what do they have to go through to get approved to be able to do business? How do they deal with uh, uh, credit or getting uh, you know uh, taxes? Like, what are the obstacles in it? Okay, cool. Um, all right, so in relation to the first part about the challenges, um, have we got, could this event go for like eight hours? Because I have quite a few challenges that I could share. <laughs> That's a joke, but I, I like being. No, I'm laughing, I'm laughing. I didn't want to cut you off. <laughs> no, cool. Um, so, six months in, um, man, I have come up against so many obstacles that I didn't expect. Uh, and the things that I expected to be hard, I mean, yeah, they're hard, but there were there are things that have been really challenging which I just didn't I didn't realise. Like just to get a bank account was a nightmare. Sorting my phone, like the the most basic things that we take for granted, um, have been really challenging. And and I think probably the biggest issue with the, those challenges is that the time they take up. I never, I didn't allocate the time that those things would take and then obviously learning the tax system even just setting up your my accounting software um, the way that invoicing is done here is so different the way um, so all, all of those business foundations the setup I didn't really think there would be such differences um, the payroll systems um, the employment of people it, like everything is completely different to where I'm from so there's a hot so that's one element of how it's been very surprisingly different then there is the difference that I've found personally so just it's just so different living here learning how to thrive so you know it's a, it, you think that you're going to another English speaking country but really um, I was surprised how different it is actually to live here then which leads on to how do you get a credit rating so you can actually lease your own apartment how do you um, how do you get through everything when you don't have social security number? Um, so, so one of the one of the ways one someone I know said it's like um, these everyday things are just constant obstacles that just and when you put them all together, it it can be really um, like just get I don't know it just gets you down makes you tired get like sort of it's it, that's hard and I think that um, that is what it is but I probably didn't realise the extremity of that um, so that's that part of it and then there's the other part of doing a startup in a new country with no network um, and what that really means um, and even if you do think you have some sort of network um, I, I totally underestimate my network in Australia and how much it's helped me grow my business over the 12 years that I've been in business there so that's another whole um, element of conversation um, and then there's the fact that people don't understand my accent which I never expected so making phone calls has been more difficult than I um, expected um, and then I, I for me personally I my kids I have three um, three young boys and I haven't brought them over they're, they're not coming over to August so I basically will do 12 months without my kids here and so personally that's been a really interesting experience obviously very challenging um, uh, yeah, so I don't. So there, there's um, Jimmy. There's so many different elements that I could talk about just from being here six months. Um, that I think. Um, well, I think they're interesting. I'm finding it very interesting. But I think that they're things that people don't consider. Um, yeah, I definitely think uh, you, you, you would be a great fit for the panel. Um, it's on uh, February 27th. Uh, Helen, I think I sent you the info. Thank you.